In this video, I would like to introduce my new book. It's called Generative AI in the Nutshell, How to Survive and Thrive in the Age of AI. And it is essentially the book version of my video with the same name that I released about a little more than a year ago. That video went super viral and I've been working with the AI full time and learned a lot. So this fall, I decided to sit down and put all that into a book, which follows the same format of the video, but expands on it a lot. There's two editions of the book. There's this fancy pantsy hardcover edition with, which has nice colorful drawings and illustrations. And then there's a the little cheaper, but still fine looking, uh, black and white version. It's the same exact content. So the only difference is that the, the hardcover is a little more kind of coffee table like book, but yeah, it's the same content. And there's of course also, um, ebook versions on Amazon for Kindle and also on LeanPub, which is where I originally published the book. So to give this video a bit of structure, I asked my friend Claude to suggest some suitable questions and I'll kind of, I'm going to set this up kind of like an interview. Question one, what inspired you to write this book? Um, I would say mainly the incredibly positive reactions from the video. It clearly made a difference to people, helped them understand what gen AI is and how they could use it. And I've been using it every day, building stuff. I co-founded a company and working with clients and just learned a lot. So I felt like my head was full and I just wanted to get more out there. So I, I used the video as a starting point and then just uh, expanded on pretty much everything. And it was nice to be able to have the space to do that instead of having to compress everything into this very short 18 minute video. Question two, how is this book different from what viewers already saw in your video? Well, as I mentioned, mainly it just goes into a lot more depth. Um, and I also, I split it into two parts. So part one is basically formatted like the video. It's the same uh, basic narrative, but of course with a lot more detail. Think of part one, kind of like a, a, a meal where each piece fits together into one whole. While part two is more like a, um, a buffet with different parts, different essays that are independent. For example, how I got into AI tips on how to lead an AI transformation, a retrieval augmented generation, um, using AI for software development, more prompt engineering techniques, uh, AI agents, just a lot more stuff. So you can kind of choose how much detail you want, but yeah, the main difference is there's just more in here. Another difference is that I've learned a few things since I made the video. So the book is obviously more up to date. All right. Question three, who is the book for? The book is actually for everyone. I haven't selected any specific type of audience. It's a very broad audience for beginners. You kind of learn what this is. You kind of get the big picture and how can this technology actually help you? And for more experienced people, you'll get a lot of specifics, like in more advanced techniques, uh, use cases you probably have thought of. So that was one of the things that inspired me was the fact that the video clearly reached a very broad audience from, you know, kids to teachers, to university professors, to businessmen, just very, very wide audience. So that's kind of my goal with the book as well. So this ties nicely into question four. If I'm not technical and don't work with computers, will the book still benefit me? Um, yes, I really think it will. Like I mentioned, the book is not really very technical. There are some chapters that are technical, but you can of course skip those. I've uh, tried to avoid using strange buzzwords, anything that'll confuse people and instead have the book really give you the big picture and an understanding of how everything fits together. And most importantly, how you as a human can really make use of this technology as a tool in your life. All right. Question five, if readers could only remember one insight from your book, what would you want it to be? Um, that's a tough one. But I would say experiment, try this stuff. Don't overthink it. Just start using the technology in your day-to-day -day work. And the reason for that is, well, A, it's the best way to learn, but also there's a lot of uncertainty about the future. What does the future look like when this technology is used all over the place? And what happens when the AI models get smarter and smarter? No one really knows what's going to happen, but one thing is a fairly safe bet. And that is, if you understand how to use the technology, at least at some level as a tool, then you'll be better equipped for whatever that future looks like. Okay. Question six, which languages is it available in? Um, it is actually available in 32 languages if I counted right, because I wrote it in English and then AI translated it to 31 more languages. All right. Are those good translations? Well, I did some blind testing with that and concluded that they're actually pretty good, but not quite as good as if a human had done it, but I still shipped it because I felt that they're good enough. They're technically correct 
just that some of the phrasings aren't quite the way you might have phrased it if you were a native speaker. So for that reason, I've set up a community process. The source code of the book is available as a GitHub project, and I'll leave a link in the video description. And if you want to help improve an AI translation, that would be great. So I've set up a process for that where people can help improve the AI translations. Okay, question seven. With AI evolving so rapidly, how have you ensured the content remains relevant? That's a really good and a very relevant question. Let's take the video as an example. It's, it's a year old, but surprisingly, I would say it's mostly still relevant because I put quite a lot of effort into thinking about what kind of things do I bring up in the book and which things are likely to go out of date really quickly and which things are likely to stay relevant. But obviously it is a fast moving field. So I expect some things to go out of date and therefore I expect to make updates to it, probably a second edition, maybe a yearly update. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I hope it'll stay mostly relevant and then I'll make updates um, probably if things start getting really out of date. All right, question eight. What was the most challenging thing about writing this book? Honestly, just getting it done. Because I wrote most of it actually in a week. I sat down and really focused on it. But then I kept coming up with more things to add later. And because the te technology keeps shifting and advancing, there was always more stuff to add. So it was really hard to just draw the line and say, this is good enough. I don't care if something interesting happens next week. I'm just going to ship it. So that was a big challenge. But yeah, I managed to draw the line after a while, which is great. And like I mentioned, I'll probably update it later anyway. Another challenge was actually the cover, um, deciding what exactly am I going to put here. And uh, I finally decided to go with this very simple little picture of an AI and a human kind of walking together, collaborating, because that's my way of seeing it. I think of it as a tool, but a tool with, with a brain or at least some kind of intelligence, not necessarily, you know, self-awareness, but definitely some kind of intelligence. And it's a useful mental model to think of it as a colleague or a friend who you are working with. So I tried to convey that with a simple picture, but it took a while for me to come up with what was that going to look like. And <laughs> interesting side story there. In my first version of this picture, I showed it to my son and I also showed it to ChatGPT and asked, what does this picture convey? And they both gave the same answer. It conveys the picture of a human running for his life from a robot. And I was like, uh, no, that's not at all what I wanted to convey, of course. So it turned out that all I needed to do was move this robot just a few millimeters closer to the human so it looks like they're walking next to each other. That small difference. And then suddenly both my son and ChatGPT agreed that, yeah, this looks like a picture of a human and an AI walking together side by side collaborating. It's interesting how just, you know, such a small difference can make such a huge difference in our brains. But yeah, coming up with a cover was kind of tricky, but I'm very happy with the way it ended up. Question nine, which publisher did you go with and why? I used LeanPub, a self-publishing platform. And the reason why I didn't use a traditional publisher, which I've done for my previous three books, is because things tend to take time and I wanted to get this book out quickly. There are some other reasons as well, but that was one of the main ones. And then I used a service that LeanPub offers called Global Author. And that was amazing. I can really recommend it if you're an author. It is like a kind of concierge service where it's your book, you're self-publishing, you own all the decisions, but they help you with all the kind of nitty gritty stuff like formatting the cover, getting stuff up on Amazon, handling all these details around the layout of the book and uh, um, discussions around pricing. It was just so useful. And they also manage the AI translation process. But what I really appreciated was how helpful th uh, they were, but without like forcing me to make decisions that I didn't want to. So I felt like I was in the pilot seat, but they really helped me with the stuff that I needed help with. So yeah, it felt kind of like I got all the best parts of having a publisher without getting all the worst parts. So yeah, highly recommended Lean Pub and the Global Author Package. Question 10, did you really write this book <laughs> or was it written by AI? Be honest now. Okay, I wrote it. This is a human written book or I would say a mostly human written book. My sidekick Egbert, an AI character, wrote the foreword and added some sarcastic comments here and there in the book. And I also let him write a chapter on his own life story because honestly, I think it's hilarious. But other than that, it's human written book, but with AI assistance. So I used AI for help as an editor, as a sounding board, for all kinds of things. But I wrote the book myself and it took a lot of time, but I'm very happy with it. I could have used AI a lot more, 
as a reader, you probably wouldn't have noticed a difference, but I wouldn't have felt as proud of it. So I wanted this to be my book and I've obsessed over every sentence in the book. Okay, last question. What's your favorite part of the book that wasn't covered in the original video? I would probably say all the real life stories. That's not one part, I know, but all the real life stories. The book is full of little anecdotes and examples of real life stories. And I've noticed through this book and all my previous books and videos that people appreciate that. Real life examples help make things clear. So yeah, having the chance to tell the stories and share what I've learned felt really nice. And I also enjoyed writing about agents because I'm very interested in AI agents, autonomous AI agents. And uh, uh, in the book, I had a chance to kind of make it a little more clear what that means and kind of this strange new world we're entering where probably every team and company will have AI colleagues in the form of agents. But okay, we'll stop there. I hope this was an interesting little video. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the book if you choose to buy it and read it. Oh yeah, I want to add one thing. Uh, it's a new book, so I'd appreciate any help with spreading the word. And if you read the book, please add a review. That kind of stuff is always super useful. But yeah, thanks for watching.